Hi, I'm Paul Germain. Welcome to another session of Smart Boating. As you know, typically the show focuses on informational topics to help make you, make us, make you a smarter boater, whether it's the hurricane protection or insurance, docking, that sort of thing. But every now and then we take a side trip down some road where I think might be of interest to you as a boater. That's the case today. We're at the New Hampshire Boat Museum in Wolfboro, New Hampshire at their annual auction. And joining us to tell us a little bit about that is Hank Wye. Welcome, hi. Thanks, Paul, for coming. And uh, this is our annual auction, which covers all sizes and shapes of boats. And this year, we've introduced cars. Oh, yeah. Antique cars, because mm -hmm. we want to broaden the appeal to the public. OK. And uh, we've got a beautiful day. I can't remember if it ever rained, but we are <laughs> certainly lucky. Uh, and Paul's going to show you a lot of the boats we have here. This is a either boats are on commission, Mm -hmm. Most of them with the reserve figure. Uh, many of them are donated to smaller boats. Okay. And then we have a lot of small nautical in, uh, smalls, we call them, and uh, they are mostly for the donated. Well, here's an interesting boat at the auction today. It's a 1950, 22-foot Chris Craft Sportsman. Rick, you know, you're on the board of trustees here at the museum along with Hank. It looks like a real classic. This is, this, and this is probably one of the most popular boats that Chris Craft made because of the utility style of the interior versus a triple cockpit. This is uh -huh. an open interior, uh, one big cockpit with the engine in the center under a box, mm -hmm. uh, you free to walk all around and thus the word utility yep. is how they came about. Yep. And uh, this is a Great boat, you can see it's in excellent condition. Yeah. And you might just note the spotlight yeah, up on the, the front detail. deck. Mm -hmm. And this boat particular spotlight is off center, which you normally don't see. Well, normally they're right true. in the center. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was must have been the owner's personal preference or, oh, yeah. or whatever. Maybe it wouldn't light the flag up. But mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. no, this is a great boat. And a lot of these were produced. Uh, you notice at high sides. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. here's the interior and there's a as you see, an automotive banjo-style steering wheel, automotive gauges, mm -hmm. and um, the automotive. Uh, a lot of the accessories came from the automotive yeah, industry. Yeah, well, styling cues from the automotive industry. Yeah, yeah. and equipment, steering wheel, steering box. That is an automotive steering box in it. And um, and this is it. And coming up, you can see the open interior with the engine under the box, mm -hmm. and that box just rolls over to the side or can be removed. And that's original engine, right? That's an ML, Chris the, Craft ML engine? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. That's an original engine, six, flathead six-cylinder. Yeah. 130 yeah. by horsepower. All right, and that's the optional uh, swim Ster platform off the back. The stern ladder, yeah, stern, stern ladder. ladder. And that yeah, folds okay. down, you see a little hook, and that'll fold down, and so you can climb up and makes it a lot easier to get in the boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, here's another interesting one. It's a 55, 16-foot pinion, Niagara with a 35 horsepower Everwood on it. Uh, if I remember correctly, these were built in Penyon, New York. That's why they're called pinions. What, what are your thoughts on this boat? Well, you can see it's a very similar um, looks and construction with a lap side as a, as a probably more popular lineman and people okay. got to know. Um, similar construction with the plywood planks mm -hmm. and most likely, I believe these were fastened with copper rivets okay. versus the clincher nails, which were copper nails that were in and folded over to lock them. Yes. Um, but uh, very, very popular boats back in the days. These were small lake boats, mm -hmm. um, and lap streaks were a very popular construction. Kept the boats very light. Oh, very light. That's okay. You didn't have the double planks, and oh, you didn't need all okay. the structure on the inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's the interior, and these. You'll see a very basic, very yes. minimal instruments. Uh, the old dual lever <laughs> right. control with the throttle and the shift, and in the old cable uh, cable steering. Mm -hmm. But you'll see the sides are open. Yes. And in a very utilitarian seats. Yes. <laughs> and most likely, probably someone fishing in this. Yes, it's a great probably, boat for fishing. They were. Yeah. And. Um, and here's a very uh, appropriate engine for this boat and could have very well been the original yes. engine on yes. this boat. It's mm -hmm. of the right era and uh, uh, electric start, which was big in the day. Mm -hmm. And Yeah, that's a beauty. Yep. Well, here's, here's another one. It's a 16-foot hacker design that was custom-built, right? That's correct. It was built by a local gentleman. He's not 
a boat builder by a particular, but he certainly is a talented woodworker, as we can see, yes, and, yes. Um, and took this project on, and it's a certainly a very, very well done and a very interesting um, hacker design boat. Yeah, and these are very fast designs, and this has an interesting engine in it too, right? Yes, it does. This has a, a Buick small displacement aluminum V8, Okay. which was very popular, a lot of hot rodders, and, um, and fairly unique. You didn't see a lot of marine conversions in these engines. Okay. And it's under this front hatch, mm -hmm. as you can see, and also notice the curved or the crown deck. Yes, I like that. That was very much a hacker oh, okay. uh, thing. And traditional car steering wheel is and the, the throttle. Throttle in the center of the steering spinner, wheel. And the black knob on the dash is a shift. Oh, okay. And that's how you shift it. And this is a single cockpit, mm -hmm. uh, side by side. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll continue on. You can that's see a very, very well done, uh, well done boat. Yeah, how about the stern here? I see a trim tab in the center yeah, of yeah. the stern. Uh, most likely that's for, a, it's called a cavitation plate. Okay. And it aids in avoiding cavitation in these boats. Mm -hmm. And it would hold the water down, wouldn't let air get in and get to the propeller. I see. And it would cause cavitation. Okay, well this next one is a uh, 1937, it's a newer version of it, but it's a 1937 Criss Cross Special Race Boat. Beautiful boat. Well, what, what are some of the important things about this boat? Well, this is a replica. The hull was actually built in Australia mm -hmm. and shipped uh, to this country in containers, and there's probably 20 of these were imported. Oh. Um, and this boat is replica of a 19-foot Chris Craft racing runabout right. in the mid to later 30s era. And okay. that's why they're painted, because the World War II, one was, two were started, and mm -hmm. you couldn't get mahogany. Oh, is that That's right? That's why these boats were painted in this era. Okay. This is a west boat. It's built with west epoxy and all wood, and you can see the interior very much. All the hardware yeah, is beautiful. original, oh, Chris see. Craft hardware, the windshield and the fittings, the throttle isn't, and the steering wheel isn't, but right. uh, traditional style gauges yeah. and a shift lever on the floor. It's, it's a pretty interior there, and it looks like it has all the gauges you need for it. Yeah, this boat, all the gauges you need, and certainly you can see uh, uh, they Chris Craft had more gauges. And this, mm -hmm. there's the engine hatches, and there's a V8, and this one's a uh, 350 cubic inch Chevrolet V8. Oh, yes. Okay. With the Chris Craft, and these uh, came with a variety of engines from six cylinder to um, the early, early 283 Chevy V8s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty boat there. Interesting, the, the, the transom, the way the transom. Yeah, the tumble the, home. The tumble home. Yeah. Tumble home. And again, you can see the arch in the decks. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a Century. So, a Century and some of these other builders were in competition. This is an Arabian, a 1967 Arabian with a, a with a interceptor in it, which was a pretty, pretty serious engine, right? Yeah, well, uh, one thing about Century, and this is even a later, this is one unique thing about this, a very late wood boat. Yes. Yeah, yes. uh, being in the, this uh, very late, and Century always was known to put big engines. Okay. And they wanted to be faster than everybody else, and the boats were very <laughs> light. They were single planked, mm -hmm. um, single planked and battens, internal battens uh, mm -hmm. on the bottoms, and um, Century was known to... Uh, not be afraid of powering their boats. Right, and they're very luxurious, as we can see from this shot here, looking at the interior. Yeah, right? this would be, it's a V-drive, the engine's all the way to the back, mm -hmm. and it's powered a V-drive, and you have the two bucket seats and then a bench seat across the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, might be referred to as a double cockpit forward, or whatever, but there was no, uh, no seating in the after. And that's a car steering wheel again. Yeah, it's a lot of automotive cues in here. A lot again. of automotive cues, mm -hmm. and no question. The engine's under that sun pad mm -hmm. in the rail, so you could uh, sunbathe up there. I think this name is kind of funny, because it's Nightmare, yeah. and, and Centuries was known as a thoroughbred of boats, right? Yes, they were. They were known as a thoroughbred of boat, and um, could refer, these were, these were tremendous performance for the air. Mm-hmm. That's a beauty. Well, here's an interesting boat. This is a, uh, a 1929 racer. This lakeside is a step-tall racer. It apparently, had full planks, you know, regular plank construction to it. And this was a this was a show winner out at Clayton at their competition in 2014 for the best pre-war outboard race boat. 
this. And probably the most noteworthy thing with this view we can see is a step in the hull, and mm -hmm. that's a very substantial step. That uh, is, yeah. And the purpose of that step was to reduce the wetted area of a boat. Mm -hmm. That let air in mm -hmm. under the boat, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and thus reduce the friction yes. on the bottom of the boat. And yes. it was quite a speed enhancing thing. And most people wouldn't know, but the stepped hulls, which are common today in a lot of performance boats, came from right. way, way 1920s. back. 1920s. Yeah, 1920s. And so <laughs> they were into it and and certainly experimented with those with those things. This is, this is a great, great boat. Yeah, it is. It's just a, basically, like, say, a racing boat. Here's the interior yeah, of it. Yeah. Very simple. So. It is very simple. You know, you sat in the back. The driver sat in the rear cockpit and the steering wheel was in the center. It wasn't meant to go out and go. We went fishing and uh, this is a single, uh, uh, single purpose. Mm -hmm. um, now you get a lever in there, yeah. and I'm not quite sure what that's for, but it is a very simple thing. Now this has got a very interesting uh, outboard. This is a 1929 32 horsepower, which is a four-cylinder outboard. That was yes. a pretty significant thing back then. That was a serious <laughs> four-cylinder outboard, and and just note the lack of any safety devices here. Open flywheel, and right. but a four-cylinder engine, and and 32 horsepower in those days was was sub certainly substantial. Yeah, that was a big deal. Yes. Okay, this next one's a 1932, 33, 18-foot garwood, and has a, uh, about 65 horse in it. These were kind of a little more limited production than the centuries and the Chris Crafts, were they? Yeah, uh, McGowwood didn't produce the mass produce them in the volumes mm -hmm. of, of Chris Craft, yes. and I believe they also were looking for a little more upscale, mm -hmm. uh, a little better upholstery inside, and a little better finish on, on things, and yes. uh, and thus you don't see that many uh, Gowwoods. Um, as you do Chris Crafts. Yes, and, yes, yes. And uh, that's that's probably the most unique thing. And, uh, and they're rarer boats, yeah. for sure. Yeah, did they do that matchbooking where they tried to line up the uh, grains of the wood sometimes? Uh, I Not hate sure. to say it, but back in the old days, no. They no. didn't spend, sure. people today get carried away, but that wasn't a traditional way. Right. You look at originally plank boats, yeah. you will not necessarily see uh, matching Planks. Yeah. And Look at this interior. Isn't yeah. this uh, nice? It's got the uh, kind of a wraparound windshield, if you will, and some yeah. really uh, nicely accented gauges yeah. and so on. Yeah, you notice the, uh, the the square gauges. Yes. Which I think were more unique to this boat yes. than uh, and Chris Craft had round gauges, the standard oh, car type okay. gauges, and those were probably a little more. And there's and there's the engine. Um, the engine box, and this is a double cockpit, mm -hmm. one cockpit forward and one one aft, with the engine in the middle. Okay. All right, and there's a stern shot here. Again, we see that uh, little barrel back. Yeah, a little uh, barrel back with a tumble back. home, and uh, and that's uh, very prevalent of the of that age vintage of boat. Yes. And uh, you notice the white striping on the decks, and yes, that yes, was, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. That's a pretty boat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, really nice. Well, this one here is a uh, lineman. A lineman sleeper, actually, a 1962, 24 and a half foot lineman sleeper, which again is back to the lap streaks. Yes, and lineman, and the sleeper lets you know that there was a couple of V bursts mm. up in the bow, mm -hmm. and as you can mm -hmm. look and imagine, it certainly wasn't the most roomy accommodations right. by any means. Right. And uh, but again, these were great, great lake boats yes. uh, built in Sandusky, Ohio. Yes, and uh, still. A lot of these survive today. Lyman had somehow built boats and they really survived. And a lot of these other lap streak boats did not. But Lyman had the certain techniques right. they used and the clincher nails were certainly part of it. Mm -hmm. Nice layout here. Uh, looks like plenty of room to move around. A lot of wood, a lot of mahogany Yeah, there. a lot of wood and the storage and the shelves in there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these you could get with a hard top. Yes. This one has the canvas top, okay. and uh, you went out in these boats, and you could store things in them, and, yes. and at little areas you could set drinks on, whatever you want to do, and there's the traditional engine box. Very easy to live with these boats. Yes, and they yeah. added a pad to that so you could sit on it. Yes, And yes. again, another utility boat. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, this looks like it's a local boat to here in New Hampshire, Alton Bay. That's right around the corner. Yes, it is. So. It's a local boat. This boat has probably been pretty, had a pretty good life, pretty well cared for. And it yep. shows, it really shows. It does. It's a, it's a very pretty boat. 
A little different uh, transom shape there. Yes. How about this one? This is a 1955 Chris Craft again, 17 foot Sportsman. Yes, now this is a smaller version of the first boat we looked at, which is a 22, 22 right. Sportsman. And this mm -hmm. is 17, it's certainly a smaller boat. Um, you notice that it has a curved, a, a plastic, curved plastic windshield yes. and a very small frame. These were, these were obviously less boat and less expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what they were looking for. And would go in a smaller lake or a smaller pond. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. versus a 22, which is a very high sided boat and okay. could take a, certainly a more substantial uh, waves in that and a more comfortable ride. And this one's got a Hercules engine, uh, yeah. uh, about 131 horsepower. Yeah, I think it's um, uh, probably a Model K mm -hmm. and a, a different horsepower variance of that. And those were still branded as Chris Craft engines, although right. the block and everything, but it had all the Chris Craft marinization on I it. I see. And there's a flathead six cylinder engine, mm -hmm. a small six cylinder mm -hmm. engine. Mm -hmm. And you can see the ship lever on the floor. And the, right, the and interior, the big engine yep. box there. And this one should be noted that a hump in that engine box yeah. is for the triple carburetor setup. I think we're going to get a look at that okay. in just a second. So, yeah, that's an interesting thing. There they are. There they are. And this is a very rare combination to see these. You don't mm. see a lot of electricity. They no. had one updraft carburetor. Yes. And it didn't. Go up this way, and this—that's uh, quite a uh, unique feature for this boat. <laughs> it's a unique feature, yeah. yeah. And then here's here's a it's a view from the transom that we're seeing. Uh, again, I notice again a difference in the transom profile. Yeah. Here's another type of boat. This is an elite craft. Not many people have seen these. This is a 1989 yeah. 20-foot elite craft, and and you know at first glance it looks like wood, which was the intent of it. Yeah. It's actually fiberglass. And and my understanding is they started buildings in about 1978. And um, really, they were designed for people that wanted the beautiful look at wood without the maintenance, right? That's correct, Paul. And they, when they started their early boats, didn't look quite like this. Sure. I, I hate to use reference, but they looked like Bamica. Yeah. And okay. just didn't have this. Um, but they've certainly come a long way. And yes. this particular boat, you look, has very Reaver. Yes. Style lines yes. with the one piece Curves. windshield, with the frame around it, and the curved up on the covering boards yes. and you can see they've certainly come a long way and they do they bring that wood look without the uh, the maintenance it's and interesting the hardware they got the cut water and yeah. they got the bow light yeah. and they got the spotlight very much in tune with that age yeah. you know? and you can see the cut water comes up and rolls into the rub rails mm -hmm. and uh nice dash yeah. here and you can look at the curved dash and you mm -hmm. don't see that uh very often no you don't and, and no, very nice don't. and this has a 350 uh, Inmar in it, I think, okay. which is producing about 300 horsepower. So it, um, I imagine it moves right along. An interesting interior, very bright. Yep. And then again, you're seeing a double cockpit forward. The engine's behind you, mm -hmm. and most likely a V drive. Could be a straight shaft. The engine's moved up. So um, and then we get the, kind of a transom, transom view here. Yep. Um, again, you can notice the pickup on all the hardware and the finish. Yep. Just really and you pretty. notice the um, the carry around of the spray rail. Yes. Very Chris Craft. Yes. Yes. And in the Chris Craft Riviera. Now here's the 74 16 foot cent Century. So this is produced. I think Century produced their last wooden boat in the late 60s, around 67. Yep. So this is one of the earlier fiberglass boats. Yep. But the shape and so on was uh, very similar to the earlier, the wood boats, right? Yes, it was. If you look at this and then you look at a hull of a 17-foot resorter from the early 60s, you're going to see all the similarity other than the windshield. Mm -hmm. yes. The older boats had a two-piece curved plexiglass window. This is glass with a little curve in it mm -hmm. and triangular side windows. Yes. And the yes. other ones, the plexiglass went around and it curved down. Um, and it's still picking up these... Like vinyl accents in the center of de the yep. deck that the sentry used. Yeah, and we have the lifting eye, which same, and it had the one piece thing in the in that scoop on the bow. That was a vent, was controllable from inside the boat, and the mm -hmm. early uh, wood boats had mm -hmm. those. Um, mm -hmm. And you can see the ski tow bar, the same same thing. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a that's a pretty boat. Um, here's the interior yeah. of it. Uh, Again, it reminds me very much of a car of that era. If yeah. I looked at this dash, I'd say, well, we're in a Chrysler yeah. or something. You know? Well, Century tried to do that, and you'll notice the shift lever is on the side oh, next right. to the steering wheel. That's, right. your, that's your shift lever transmission, okay. and the throttle 
probably most likely is a foot throttle. Okay, right. And um, then again, there's the engine box up against uh, the front seat mm -hmm. and carries through and you still see the same traditional vents and the stern ladder is identical to what was on the wooden ones. Right, okay, yeah, and, so and they carried forward a lot of popular features. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a very interesting boat coming up here today at the show. It's a 1957 18-foot Chris Craft Continental. It looks like it's got almost like a bull nose there. Well, that's what they refer to as a bull nose. A bull nose, yeah. Bull nose. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you would see that on uh, this on the Continentals and also on the Rivieras. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the between this and the Riviera is this is a utility-style layout okay. inside versus the Riviera, which is a double cockpit forward, and the engines were all the way in the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, very, very, and you notice the curved covering boards. Oh, yeah. The right. edge is not Up flat, top, it's not yeah. a sharp line coming down, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, and that's uh, in the bull nose. Yeah, and so a, a beautiful mahogany planking there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, great boats. Great boat and very stylish for the oh, time yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and coming, yeah. at, coming at the end. And this is powered by, a, uh, I guess, a KFL, a Chris Craft KFL engine K with a produce yeah. about 131 horse, Chris something like that. Yes, and there's the uh, Chris Craft used car steering wheels, as right. you can see. And, and these are the round gauges. And the round them. gauges that mm -hmm. Chris Craft uh, always use, and multi some are multifunction. It's interesting, the mixture of wood, too, where you get the blonde mahogany yeah. and then you get the normal stain. Yes, and that was a, uh, another and Chris Craft. We call them blonde decks. They did the cover boards and the decks, and some had a uh, darker mahogany king planks. Uh, very common. And this, you'll notice that spray rail yes. carryover yes. that we saw on that elite craft. Right. It's very interesting that elite craft picked that up. Right, right, yeah, right. It's one of those details that kind yeah. of sets it apart, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, just a pretty boat right there. Well, here's another alignment. This is a 21-footer, 1966, a runabout as opposed to a sleeper. Uh, this is a local boat, really well kept, right? This is a local boat, but was just recently fully restored from the very bottom up. The boat really? was stripped down yeah. by Hank Y, yeah. who we saw earlier in the introduction. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, this was his boat, and again, you can see the traditional Lyman Lap streaks and lines and yeah, Lyman was sheer line. yeah and Lyman was noted for a lot of these boats were painted gray oh they were with, with the white right under the covering oh, boards okay. a little accent mm -hmm. and um, traditional wood um, uh, windshields Lyman was yes uh, big windshields too a lot of yes. really nice visibility on them. and that gave them when you had a convertible top on you could stand up yeah that's a good and point. that's a lot of these you couldn't because right. the top was very low but the tall windshields. Uh, and these, remember, were lake boats, lake uh, on the Great Lakes. But they could take heavy water. I yes, mean, they could. The and, Great Lakes as opposed that, to the local lakes. And that's what they were known for. Right, for right. For sure. Right. So, and, and this boat has some modifications to it. You'll, that's not a Lyman throttle, and the steering right, wheel is right. different. It's been than updated. It. That's updated, yes. Yeah. And because uh, Lyman's had two two separate controls oh, right, for the right. throttle and the shift. And uh, look we'll at the finish of this boat. Just yes. Oh. Just uh, so much, so much wood, yep. you know, just really, yep. really pretty. And this has a small block Chevrolet, yeah, probably Crusader, running, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. um, well, Chevrolet block Crusader yep. conversion, yep. and yep. you know, probably running, yeah, 250 horse or right. something like that. Right. So interesting name, huh, Cabaret? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Again, an interesting stern uh, profile, which is yep. different than some of the other boats we've yep. seen, whether it's the Garwoods or the Centuries yep. or the Chris Craft. These flare out more room inside. Oh, okay. That's All what right. translated to. All right, back to another Chris Craft here. Yeah. It's a, it's a 1960 Holiday model. Yeah. It's 19 foot. Yeah. Was this a popular bow? This was, and I think these were after. You notice the absence of the bow nose, mm, but we yes. have the rolled over covering boards, mm -hmm. and I think these were going more after a sport boat like Century, the early Century Resorters were for. Okay. For water skiing and that type of thing. And this mm -hmm. is a utility style boat. Once we get to the interior, you'll see. Right. Um, and you notice the one piece metal framed windshield. Yes, I noticed the uh, the bow light there too. That's kind of an interesting shape, a little yep. different than some of the other ones we've seen. Yep. Yep. So this is a, again, single plank mahogany boat. The sides would be, the bottoms would be a double planked, double planked. with an inner uh, diagonally planked and then a layer of canvas and then uh, full four and a half planks mm -hmm. on this, that. This boat apparently has a little V8 in it, a 283, pushing yep. about 185 horsepower, which was 
probably pretty pretty decent power for a boat. In what day, is right? in Chris Craft, you normally didn't have that. But see, they were again trying to keep up with Century, mm -hmm. who put mm -hmm. nothing but big V8s in their boats. Yeah. Right. And Chris Craft did a lot of 283s. Oh, they did. Okay. A very popular uh, when they first came out. You got to remember, that's one of the early, early V8s. So here we're seeing it here. There this has the single carburetor. Yeah, single carburetor. You know, this is the unique thing about this. This is a flywheel forward. The flywheel's okay. up here in the front of this. Yes. Uh, Chris Craft. Thing in a, in a very small transmission, and that was to aid getting the engine lower oh, I and see. shallow or shaft angle. Okay, all was right. Was what they were trying to accomplish. And every all oh, most boats have a little name. Uh, this was apparently yeah. someone's little darling yeah. at one time, huh? And you notice this spray rail again carried around from the sides right across the transom. Another Chris Craft Q. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Well, here's another boat at the show here, and it's a '72 Century. It's a resorter, 18 foot. Yeah. Uh, big block in this thing, about 330 horse oh. apparently, so uh, some serious power. Did, was this kind of, again, showed the evolution from wood into the glass, yes, a lot of similarities? And we looked at that other 17 footer, you notice the same windshield, the same scoop, these yes. same rails. Yes. And yes, this was, again, century, um, and this is an 18 foot. See, they had uh, started all early with the 16 footers mm -hmm. and then the 17s and 18s, 19s, and 21s, working and, up, yeah. and working their way up. And again, this century not afraid to put big motors. These are these are these boats are. This can really move. Huh? Yes, they do. They really move, and uh, no trouble getting up on plane. No, I imagine not. No. Good ski boats, right? Excellent ski boats. Very good ski yes. boats. Yes, because very flat bottom. If you look at the when we get to the transom, you'll yes. see it's uh, flat and uh, made them faster. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the greatest ride, yeah, but right, right, they, right. These uh, are very popular. These centuries. Yes, they were. Interesting color scheme. Very yeah. bright. Yeah, and you notice the shift lever again. Yes. Up uh, right to the left of the steering wheel, yeah. and um, some of these gauges, uh, the one in the far left, is certainly not original. Uh, I don't. A couple of the ones in the so middle most are, of them are, are more original. Yes, most they are. are yeah. And there's uh, the engine down there, yeah. that big 330 horse. Yeah. And then right, you notice the drink holders, and that's yes. like a little bar that. Flopped open, and you could put your, your bottles in. And there's a traditional century stern ladder. Yes. And right. here we see it coming yep. down the back. And that's, yep. again, when you're doing a lot of water skiing, yep. that's really nice yep. to have. And the flare out on the transom, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is related to more interior space. Yeah. This is a tumble home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a beautiful boat right yep. there. Yeah. Hijack. Well, Hank, you know, it's been a really fun show here today. We've been looking at a lot of interesting boats been a great auction. Um, time to wrap up the show. Is there anything you'd like to add about the auction or the museum before we close it out? Thank you for coming, Paul, to let the rest of the world know all about our auction. Yeah. And maybe they'll come next year. And yeah. the, pro the museum has a full range of boating programs all summer long, practically every weekend. We have lecture series. Mm -hmm. All of it's on our website, uh, nhbm.org. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Paul. Thank you, Hank. And thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for watching today. If you have any comments or questions, visit us on our website, www.smartboatingus.com. I hope you'll come back again soon.